We are on a 90 day countdown to Alonzo, which is Gogan, which is smart contracts. And a lot is about to happen. Get ready. Let's go. We're finally in the home stretch, guys. And somewhere around 90 days, we're going to have the Alonzo Hardcore Combinator event that's going to bring us the long awaited Gogan era smart contracts. This is going to be a very busy period for IOHK, Emergo, and the Cardano Foundation because they're going to be working like crazy to finally bring us a lot of new things we've been waiting a really long time for. One of the things we're going to learn about in the next 90 days was the new thinking in Cardano that was sort of kicked off to the public with this tweet right here about Omega plus Hydra plus Mithril. And since then, we've kind of found out that this is the way Charles thinks about Gen 3 cryptos now. He thinks that really, if a Gen 3 crypto is going to be in the game, they have to have these three things. Obviously, these are IOHK or Cardano's names for these things. But we know that Omega is sort of the roll-up of all of the Ouroboros proof of stake protocol stuff. Omega is going to be the roll up of all of those things. Hydra is layer two, because even though all of us in Cardano think that Ouroboros as a base layer is maybe the best possible base layer you could have for a blockchain, there's no detriment to us from having a great layer two. A lot of blockchains, they're basically broken and inoperable without layer two. In Cardano, that's not the case. Our base layer is great, but we can also have layer two. Hydra is going to be layer two. Then we've got Mithril. You'll remember from our video over a month ago that we tried to hunt down a neck bearded basement dwelling dungeon master to tell us that Mithril is some kind of elf armor or something like that. But in the context of IOHK, Mithril really has to do with this. It has to do with the type of wallet that is the default for a Gen 3 cryptocurrency. I was relieved when that tweet came out to figure out that what was really going on is that Cardano is moving towards light wallet as default. We all know and love the Daedalus wallet. It has this super awesome bull logo. I feel like he's just going to charge right off the screen at me. Super, super, uh, super awesome logo. The bull looks amazing. But... The Daedalus wallet is a full node wallet, meaning when you try to use the Daedalus wallet, you need to download the whole blockchain. We're expecting the Cardano blockchain is going to be around for a really long time. And having a copy of the complete blockchain on your computer is going to be a huge pain. That can't be the future. That can't be the future. Light wallets where you just rely on a server somewhere to tell you what's on the blockchain, that's gotta be the future. But there's a problem with light wallets. We have to trust that server. When I use the Uroi wallet, I have to trust Emergo's servers, wherever they are, Japan or wherever, to tell me that the ADA I'm dealing with actually exists and it hasn't been double spent, that the person sending me ADA hasn't actually already sent it to somebody else. This is a big problem. Of course, I trust Emergo, but crypto is supposed to be trustless. So we've got a little bit of a problem. We can either download the whole blockchain or we can trust a server somewhere in a light wallet. Mithril is an attempt to solve that problem. IOHK has been paying attention to protocols like Mina and Bulletproofs that rely on ZK snarks. ZK snarks are zero knowledge, succinct, non-interactive arguments of knowledge. So this is like cryptographic magic that tells us without actually having to interact with that whole blockchain, ZK snarks can be used to tell us exactly that those two things are correct, that the, the ADA we're dealing with actually exists and it hasn't been double spent. And then we can have light wallets, don't have to trust the server, and we don't have to download the blockchain. You can see why this would be valuable. Just go ahead and use Daedalus sit there and let your let your full node sync and then open up your Roy and just start using it with very little syncing and tell me that one isn't preferable over the other in terms of that wait time daedalus is a great full node wallet your Roy is a great light wallet 
and we can have all the benefits of a full node wallet with the convenience of a light wallet. That's Mithril. So Cardano is betting on this idea that to be the to be a good Gen three blockchain, you've got to have good layer two, a good base protocol protocol, which is all of the Ouroboros stuff rolled up in Ouroboros Omega, and you've got to have Mithril. We now know that IOHK has teams of actual humans working on those projects, and we're going to hear more about them in the next 90 days. Also, be aware, we now have official Army of Spies battle shirts. They say things like, warning, relentless Cardano chat incoming, so that none of your friends and family can say they weren't forewarned about your incessant Cardano chat. You can find the link down in the description box below. We also now know that IOHK and Emergo are in very deep and intense discussions about this. What is going to be the MetaMask of the Cardano universe? Because it's not just enough to have smart contracts and dApps running on smart contracts. You have to have some way of interacting with those dApps. So in the Ethereum universe, that's always been MetaMask. MetaMask is a browser extension, super easy to download, and then you can interact with dApps. You can go to the Decentraland website, open up your MetaMask, and all of a sudden you can use your Ethereum wallet to interact with the Decentraland universe. We also need this for Cardano. And IOHK and Emergo were pretty silent on this topic until uh, a I think it was a couple months ago, we uh, we covered it on this channel, but all of a sudden we found out that the guys over at Emergo were working on something they were calling the DAP connector. The DAP connector is the MetaMask of the Cardano universe. And we don't know if that's going to be just sort of incorporated into Uroi, if it's going to be a standalone thing, but that's coming. And we're going to learn about that in the next 90 days because... What good are smart contracts and dApps if you can't interact with them? It's got to be some kind of browser extension. Something else we're going to learn about in the next 90 days is how we avoid this. The story of Ethereum smart contracts over the last several years has in no small dose been a story of hacks and exploits. Maybe the first big famous one was the recursive call attack on the original Ethereum DAO. How much money was lost in this thing? I think it was on the order of like $150 million. Uh, Vitalik and the other uh, founders of Ethereum kind of made the decision to destroy the immutability of the Ethereum blockchain to correct this attack. But attacks on smart contracts, successful exploits have been a huge part of the Ethereum story. How is Cardano going to avoid this? Something called Alpha Frontier. Alpha Frontier is going to be a system for certifying smart contracts. So in his recent video, Charles mentioned that this might, this might be centered in the blockchain laboratory at the University of Wyoming that Cardano has been a part of. And we'll have an actual system of certification of smart contracts. So if you were going to participate in something like the DAO back in the day, instead of just doing it and trusting the people who coded the DAO, you could rely on this Alpha Frontier system of smart contract certifications. And hopefully people who are very skillful at detecting problems will have either certified or not certified the smart contracts underlying any project you might be about to participate in. Speaking of smart contracts, we now have a little bit more information about some of the people who will be coding those smart contracts. So the Plutus Pioneer program has been going on for some time now. I believe they are on week seven, lecture seven at least. I'm not sure on the release schedule if it's exactly a week, but something like that. And we know that about 1,500 people applied for the Plutus Pioneer program. Charles says they were expecting like two or 300. And out of those 1,500, it sounds like at least 500 or 600 people are taking the course very, very seriously. Charles says they're getting great questions and it sounds like the Plutus pioneers are developing like quite a bit of competency in Plutus. So uh, Charles also revealed Alonzo code is currently running on internal nodes at IOHK. And it sounds like they're getting about ready to turn these Plutus pioneers loose on 
those internal nodes so they can really stress test everything and try to break the system. We also know that a bunch of high level, ultra competent functional programmers in various, various different uh, shops, various different companies are also in there stress testing the system and trying to break anything they can. For those of you who are really only concerned with when all this is going to hit, when smart contracts, you'll probably be relieved to hear that Charles will spend some time talking about deadlines. In the early days of IOHK and Cardano, they definitely missed some deadlines. And Charles took full accountability for missing those deadlines in this video. He said, hey, since then, we have professionalized the entire organization. We learned how to build in redundancies. We learned how to build things in parallel. And now when we miss deadlines, we're not going to miss deadlines by months. We're going to miss deadlines by weeks. And he actually used the, the number 90 days in the title of this video. He was quick to point out it might not be exactly 90 days, but it sounds like they are on track to not miss it by very far. We've got a lot of exciting things coming in the next 90 days. I hope everybody enjoys it. Talk to you tomorrow.